Welcome to the Awake Nation News, and here is the top story of the day. Taylor Swift murdered a fan in a satanic blood ritual, according to an Illuminati insider. We have a video from Baxter Dimitri of The People's Voice, and let's play that video now because this tells the entire tale. One moment. Let me get to it. Here we are. Here it is. Taylor Swift murdered a young fan in a satanic blood sacrifice ritual, according to production staff from Swift's Concerts movie, who alleged the pop superstar was also forced by music industry Illuminati to drink the young boy's blood. Taylor Swift The Era's Tour is a live portrait of the pop superstar at the top of her game, or at least it appears to be, with 10 acts spanning 169 minutes, countless hits, and seemingly endless wardrobe changes. The movie has grossed over $260 million so far, making it the most lucrative concert film in history. But in reality, Swift was operating at close to breaking point, experiencing extreme pressure from the industry. And after breaking down, she shared what she described as an evil story with staff, shocking those in attendance, including industry veterans who thought they had heard it all before. It has long been claimed that Hollywood stars and entertainment industry celebrities need to join the Illuminati to make it to the top of the industry. But few people outside of the Illuminati in a circle truly understand what this means. As the world argues about whether Taylor Swift is a psyop being prepared to swing the election for Joe Biden in November, it's worth remembering that she's not new to this game. I've taken a lot of crap for this online. I think they're using Taylor Swift right now. They're gearing up for an operation to use Taylor Swift in the election against everything, against Trump or Biden. They're going to get her and all, you know, they call them the Swifties. They're going to turn those into voters. You watch. Back in 2009, Swift was initiated into the entertainment industry Illuminati as part of a televised occult mega ritual known as the VMAs. After she endured her ritualistic public humiliation at the hands of Kanye West during an acceptance speech, Swift re-emerged, dressed in red as a new and consecrated artist. But her public humiliation wasn't enough. She also had to undergo a blood sacrifice ritual to sell her soul to the elite. According to production staff, it was at this time that Swift took the life of one of her young fans at an industry party in a private room surrounded by middle-aged industry executives who witnessed the act and later defiled the body after inviting Taylor to drink the boy's blood. This is when Swift's work began to be tainted with the codes and symbolism of the occult elite. Eight years later, at the 2017 VMAs, Taylor Swift premiered her new video, Look What You Made Me Do. The message of the video could not be clearer. Taylor had matured into a full-fledged industry slave. In one scene, Taylor is crowned a high priestess of the industry. How? By recreating the high priestess tarot card. Madonna was considered a high priestess of the industry. It appears that Taylor Swift has now achieved this status as well. To those in the know, this music video can be read as an MK Ultra Symbolism 101 course. Those who rule the entertainment industry need to have this monarch culture constantly at the forefront of popular culture. Monarch programming is a branch of the illegal CIA Project MK Ultra. The main goal of Monarch is to program slaves to have multiple personas that can be triggered at will. Beta programming, also known as sex kitten programming, is used to create sex slaves to be trafficked in the shady elite underworld, while brainwashing vulnerable members of society into selling their own souls to the dark prince. Newsflash, the entertainment industry is full of beta kittens, and the elite brags about this in mass media, using the likes of Taylor Swift, whose music, videos, and live performances are laden with far too many blatant occult references to mention in one video. The end of the video depicts the death of the old Taylor and the birth of yet another mind-controlled persona. Then Taylor says, I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, because she's dead. The video ends with Taylor Swift's multiple MK Monarch personalities arguing with each other. Stop making that surprise face. It's so annoying. You can't possibly be that surprised all the time.
무슨 대 조합입니다. 사각지가 좀 nice. You are so fake. Oh, there she goes. Time to get them again. What are you doing? Getting more seats. I'm gonna edit this later. I would very much like to be excluded from this narrative. Could it be any more obvious? Well, actually, yes. The entertainment industry elite have moved on to the next phase of their agenda, and they are now determined to open or rub our faces. Is the entertainment industry Illuminati using their mind-controlled slaves to openly promote occult spirituality as a viable religious choice for young people seeking spiritual guidance? Ever since legendary blues musician Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil at midnight at a crossroads in Mississippi, artists have been admitting to their pacts with the devil. Or, as Bob Dylan calls him, the chief commander of this world and the world we can't see. That's when I went to the crossroads and made a, a big deal. You know, like, yeah. one, one night, and then uh, went back to Minneapolis, and I was like, yeah, where's this guy been? Yeah, he went to the crossroads. Why do you still do? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny things. You know, I had to bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where uh, I am now. So, so that's who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and this earth, and then, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Bob Dylan didn't explain what kind of ritual he was forced to engage in to sell his soul. But the Taylor Swift allegations add to the wave of accusations made by celebrities and musicians about the real nature of the music and entertainment industry elite. Corey Feldman and Elijah Wood have both gone on the record, exposing the satanic pedophilia at the heart of Hollywood. According to Elijah Wood, innocent young lives are being destroyed to satisfy people with parasitic interests who see you as their prey. In an interview with the Sunday Times, Woods dropped a series of bombshells about the pedophiles that run the industry, noting that clearly something major was going on in Hollywood. It was all organized. If you listen to the mainstream media, pedophilia is not a problem, and Satanism in the entertainment industry doesn't exist. And those who talk about such things are tinfoil hat-wearing kooks spreading fake news. But more and more stars are coming forward, with similar stories about the depraved Hollywood and music industry system. In 2017, Justin Bieber told hundreds of people at a Bible studies class in Los Angeles that he had woken up to the evils of the music industry and he needed to take a break from the industry because it's controlled by the absolute worst kind of people, pedophiles. Describing a party on tour attended by the upper echelon of the music business, including executive VPs of development, producers, power agents and international financiers, Bieber said he was encouraged to sexually abuse a young child who had been brought to the party for the sexual gratification of the industry elite. Bieber explained that it was made clear to him that he would gain entry to the business side of the industry if he joined the club by passing the initiation rites. I wouldn't just be a performer, I'd be a mogul. It's the difference between being a millionaire and being a billionaire. But Bieber told the congregation that he couldn't do it. To join the club, I'd have to do bad things to this poor kid. But then I realized that even that wasn't enough for them. I'd also have to kill this little child. Bieber's traumatic experience with industry elite sounds eerily familiar to the story shared by Swift's production crew. It also sounds eerily familiar to Hollywood actor and former child star Ricky Schroeder's warning about the pedophilia and occult rituals in the entertainment industry. Let me explain. When I was young, I couldn't drive yet. And I, I was hanging out with the older guys. And I'm in Point Doom, and somebody popped in a cassette tape into a VHS player. And there was a room with a body, I believe it was a male, laying on a table. And uh, people came around the room. It was dimly lit, but they had hoods and robes on. And uh, they had some sort of ritual where they took out a knife and they cut him down the side. It was his right side. And they took out parts of him and the blood started flowing. And they were chanting. And um, some, there was women there and they took off their clothes 
and then they took the blood and they smeared it on their bodies and started to be sexual with each other. It was uh, quite disturbing to see. And so uh, they gave me the cassette and I took the cassette to somebody I trusted and I, we watched it and uh, they said, never watch that again and give it back to whoever gave it to you. So I did that, but I was always confused about why they didn't ask where it came from. And so I believe that I met some of the cult members when I was younger. If in fact we have no accountability or justice, it could be because these people that are supposed to bring us justice and protect and defend the constitution are corrupted by this cult. I have no fear of them. You know, I only fear Jesus. And so perhaps whoever's investigating these folks needs to go, we need to go a layer below the top and come up from the mid level who are not cult members been blackmailed by the cult possibly because uh, that's the only explanation I have for why we haven't had accountability and justice for what they've done to America and continue to do to America while we all just watch. So I share this with the hope that those mid-level people that are investigating at the FBI and the CIA will understand that their superiors perhaps will never give us justice because of the level of blackmail involved. All right, that's off my chest. That feels better. Now you all know. God bless America and God bless those trying to defeat this cult. In Jesus' name, I give you this message. Amen. Even though the mainstream media won't report on it, these disgusting child predators are so vile, they simply must be exposed and put out of business. Why won't the media report on it? Hollywood producer John Paul Rice says, the media have an agenda of silence because the leading six media organizations in the US are all complicit in child sex trafficking. The media corporations, the most powerful six corporations in the land, in the world for that matter, are all implicated in human trafficking of kids. And I would point to anybody who wants to know more about that to look at Project Veritas and the, and the leak disclosure of off-air footage of Amy Robach from ABC News when she found out and was discussing in 2016 that they had everything from Virginia Guffrey, all of it. Everybody who was involved, they had all the evidence their own lawyer said that when all is said and done, Jeffrey Epstein will go down as one of the most prolific pedophiles in all of history. And they buried that story to have access to the royal family, for which we now know Prince Andrew was implicated. They did not have any remorse for the victims in that video. This is the bigger problem because most people know in that world and the world that I come from in Hollywood, that it is a hidden layer that everybody knows is there. When the Me Too movement started in 2017, I reached out to several of my female actress friends who were prominent in LA. You would know them by name. Many of them you would know by just their look because you go, oh, that was her in that movie or that movie. And I said, well, what about the children? What about the children? And, they, and the response was, we know, we know. But they were silent on it. And it destroyed me because it destroyed my illusion of what rights, human rights were, children's rights were. This is a child abuse system that we have been living in for a very long time and it's been allowed to go on. And I will not be silent about this because it affects every single one of us. The people on television who smile at you, who tell you stories, who give you news are the ones who hide all of this from us. So as you can see, folks, this is a tremendous problem, which we continue to cover on this program and will continue to do so going forward. 
putting forth our best efforts to put an end to it. Penny? Uh, I actually wrote a blog on the Taylor Swift incident. It's my chapter 23. Uh, you can go to Shepherd Entertainment. That's S-H-E-P-A-R-D, the word entertainment.blogspot.com, where I did uh, a decode on the Taylor Swift song that uh, he's mentioning uh, in the very beginning of, uh, this is uh, Dimitri Baxter, in the very beginning of his uh, dissertation. Um, and I also know uh, John Paul Rice, um, who I've spoken to on many occasions, um, a very brave individual. And uh, we're all endeavoring, we're probably not even gonna get to much news. We're all endeavoring to, and this is the news, to put it quite frankly, yeah. this is the news uh, that is being uh, discarded and being claimed as it's fake news. It, it's not fake news. I it's know. Not. Yeah, I lived I in Hollywood. Hollywood. Heather? Yeah, I'd like to say a couple things. Um, yeah, I lived in Los Angeles about 20 years ago. I went to a party in the Hollywood Hills. I saw how normal it is for people, you know, teenage girls to date people 15 years older. It was just accepted, you know, parties that um, just were flagrant, you know, searching for orgy outlet. It's, it's almost like an energy that just goes over the place. And, you know, even when it comes to government employees that are seemingly covering it up, you got to understand, like, even if they're not complicit, they have children. And when you yeah. see things like that happening to children, it's, you know, they're scared. And these rituals they're talking about, you know, the death rebirth ritual and something to do with the right side and the multiple personalities, these are all rituals that are, I wouldn't say well-known because they are occulted, but these are known rituals that do exist that are done and it is done in Hollywood. And so these aren't coming out of nowhere. They are written. You just have to read the right books. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I also tr I also reached out to Ricky Schroeder when he made this disclosure because he's an extremely brave individual. He was in Los Angeles. I'm not certain, but I believe I traced him to. I think he moved to Arizona. I think he did. I think he did. And uh, and he's part of a new production company that I believe is being formed in Arizona for filmmakers who want to get out of the Hollywood scene. And yes, I, you know when people come to me because when I when I first started this endeavor and I I started it's not even DBA it's not a business. Um, I asked God what I should call my company because I had uh, an orchestra leader in Chicago asked me to represent him and the answer came back call it Shepherd Entertainment Endeavors which is C and I thought I was going to be booking people but in actuality well I am kind of booking on the show but and I was having people come to me and saying. I had realized that I had been using MK Ultra and actually as an asset, which they refer to as an agent. So I started writing under the acronym Agent X11. And then I, I added Hollywood Dark Journalists because these are the, the subjects that I report on. And uh, I had people coming to me and asking me to book them in the industry. And I said, well, I'm not that kind of agent. Apparently now I kind of am, but you know, it's not a financial reward here. It is an emotional mm -hmm reward to be able to come in and warn people um, about these satanic uh, endeavors that the military industrial entertainment complex is involved in. And I believe that they work hand in hand synonymously, I've said it over and over again, with the military industrial uh, complex because one cannot survive without the other. One is a propaganda arm. I was also, we're probably gonna, this is probably gonna take us right down to the intro for, um, for our guest segment. But um, I was also availed of, uh, I, I have many, many people coming to me that have been made homeless, uh, have been uh, kicked out of their homes um, because they're whistleblowers. Actually, uh, I'd like to tell you someone, uh, I don't wanna say who, but someone came to me about a week ago and they live in Los Angeles and um, they're, own father tried to sacrifice them at a certain age and um had this book made out of human skin and the, it was the, called the sacrifice of the firstborn um they survived and so like this is and and it's interesting how we're doing this and then people are coming to us right? yes um but it's there in california and this person suffered obviously a lot of 
mental health issues and then homelessness and all of you know the compounding traumatic responses to that but again is alive yes yeah, it's, it's alive. alive to tell the tale as a matter yeah. of fact i think that's a madonna song as well i'm still here to tell the tale and uh you know i believe that is the function of the awake nation we are to edify and illuminate properly we're not illuminati we're uh the illumini illuminices i guess the <laughs> The, no, uh, nice. I'm like right? you know the ones that are trying to to guide you and and warn you um about these endeavors i i found this one individual which i sent to both of you uh his name is cody wolf now i don't know that he speaks about the illuminati per se but he says he's leaving the country music industry and he also was homeless at one point he definitely has a heart when you go through these things you have a heart for people um, that are going through it as well. You don't want to see that happen to anyone else again. They yeah, I was in Nashville Absolutely. too. So it's Absolutely. all, it's everywhere. It's in all of the industries, Nashville, Los Angeles. All right. Um, and again, we are going to continue to cover this now. That is going to do it for the news portion of the program today. For those of you watching this on our YouTube channel at the Awake Nation News, if you'd like to watch the entire program, please go to our Rumble channel, the David Zublik channel, and subscribe and watch the show. We do it every day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time. That's it for this portion of the Awake Nation, the Awake Nation News.